Let's take another look at one of Poundland's not quite pound items. This one costs two pounds and it's a 360 degree orb cob or COB tripping board robot light. And the idea about this is that it comes with a little base. Let's get this out. Let's get its sticky pad out as well. Not that I'm actually going to stick it on anything. That would be death to wallpaper. It's got this base and you can swivel it about on it and it holds its position. It seems to be magnetic. It works very well, I have to say. It holds quite an extreme position and even upside down, you can uh, angle it to virtually a point that it's pointing sideways. And it's only when you go sort of beyond that point it sort of starts falling off. But if it was on the ceiling, you could uh, just uh, point it straight down. It holds on nice, tight, nice and tight. So when you take the back off, it's got uh, three zinc batteries, super heavy duty which is not the best type of battery. Not very high uh, lifespan for these batteries. They get very low energy density. Alkaline lines would be better. Double A's would be even better, but I don't know if that would require it to be much bigger. Let's put this back on. And it's got one setting, which uh, is quite bright, actually. The dimmer setting and then the flashing setting. I'm not sure why they've got a flashing setting. It's probably because they've just used a standard bike chip. So the magnet, I can see the magnet, if I uh, shine a light through the base of this, you can see the magnet inside there. Uh, and I'm guessing, oh it's screwed on, let's, uh, let's whip that off and take a look at the magnet. Not that there's going to be anything exciting about this, it's going to be a classic neodymium iron boron magnet. Because they're the most powerful type. It's probably not going to be that thick because I don't think it has to be that thick. It's maybe we could upgrade it with a bigger magnet and give it more suction power. Okay, so let's pop this off. Actually, that is quite a big magnet, the look of it. I think it's glued in as well. Um, oh no, it's not glued in. That is quite a big magnet and it is uh, neodymium and boron. Oh, that's quite nice. No, it's big magnets available at Poundland. The light itself, what's there? What's actually sticking? Because that does seem to stick all the way around, like that's all metal inside. Can I get this open? This is plastic. Oh, I've just popped it mm -hmm, by squeezing. Oh, there we go. That's the secret of it. Because it's a uh, this sort of dome, it can actually basically face the magnet in any at any angle. That's quite good. That's impressive. That's not bad at all. Right, next, more screws. Oh, that's not going to fit. I got another screwdriver bit that might fit into that. This is a wee bit small, but that'll do. So that's uh, three screws holding this on. What I'm expecting inside is probably one of those little generic circuit boards, probably stuck to the back, perhaps, with the uh, bike chip on it uh, and driving the cob chip on board. Uh, I read directly. C O B. It's easier to say cob than C O B. So the button, there's the C O B, the cob, which is a, uh, well, let's pop that off. It's heat staked on. That's nothing that a screwdriver won't destroy. So there's the cob C O B. It's quite nice construction. And here's the switch and the chip on the back of this. Is there even going to be a resistor? Or is it just going to be the chip and the blob? Quite often they rely on the internal impedance of the... Oh no, they do have... They, they do have the resistors here. So there's a... It's not a blob, the chip. It's a little uh, six-pin chip, sort of classic bike chip. It's got the decoupling capacitor. And then a couple of resistors. What the value of those resistors? Those resistors are... Two ohms. Let's see if I can uh, actually, let's use a different magnifier that you, that stands more chance of you actually seeing this. So it's got the uh, two ohm resistors in there. Uh, but two of them in parallel to make a total resistance of one ohm and that's going out to the chip. Um, and that is fundamentally it. It's got the positive going to the chips common, it's got the positive going straight to the uh, LED module. And the negative of the LED module is being switched down to the uh, to the chip here. But there is that little capacitor there. That's quite 
Oh, the capacitor? I thought that was on the power supply side, but that is just going out to the chip. I wonder why that is. That seems... odd. I would have thought the capacitor would have been across a decoupler on the actual supply. That's strange. And the switch is going from the negative connection here. I presume that's a negative. Yes, it is. Blue is negative and red is positive. That's nice. It's going via the switch to just one of the input pins in that chip. So it's pretty much what you'd expect. The only oddity is this capacitor that's actually connected between the negative and the LED output. You'd have thought that would put a bit of extra strain in the uh, the transistor in here when it's switched on and off. I would have thought that would have been across the um, negative and positive instead for local decoupling and that. But um, that's how it is. It possibly has scope for modifications. It's actually quite nicely made. It's even, this isn't just sort of like melted, uh, glued in. It's uh, got a little frame holding the... I was going to say reflector, it's not really a reflector, is it? Because it's just relying on the fact that cobs just bang all the light out one direction. Just for the sake of completeness of the video, I shall stuff the batteries back in. You could use rechargeables in this if you wished, obviously. And there's the... yeah, it's bright. Uh, what I could actually do here... Oh, hold on, that's a perfect idea. Let's bring in a little meter. Current clamp. Let's stick it round one of the leads and actually check the current. So let's put it to the 2 amp setting, let's put it to DC, let's null it out. So that's zero, are you able to see that okay? And uh, turn it on. Quite a lot of current, particularly for a AAA, it's about 350 milliamps. That's the best part of a 1 watt LED, isn't it then? And when you click the button, uh, it cuts down, the low isn't 50%, like it says, it's actually a third, so it goes down to about 0.3 of a watt. And then um, strobing is uh, probably full power then, um, just strobing on a 50-50 ratio going by the sort of current there. Uh, right, that's very interesting. It's quite nicely made. It's actually okay for the two pounds. It's actually a useful functional little light. Now I have to try and, I was going to say, try and glue it back together or get it back together, but uh, I really have snapped these pins off. Nothing that a bit of glue won't fix though. So yeah, quite neat. Not bad at all.